Hi, this is Gary with MacBoast.com. Let's take a look at using Genmoji on your iPhone. So a new feature of iOS and iPadOS 18.2 is an Apple intelligence feature that allows you to create your own emoji characters. Now keep in mind, your iPhone or iPad has to be compatible with Apple intelligence. You can check this URL here to see if your model is compatible and then also check in settings to see if you have Apple intelligence there and you have turned it on. Now the idea behind Genmoji is similar to that of Image Playground and Image Wand. You can create images by just describing them. But these images look like little emoji characters and they work like them too, being in line with text. You create them in the keyboard. So you have to be in an app where you're using the keyboard. Like for instance, here I am in Messages. And in Messages, I can tap on this button here to switch to emoji characters. Sometimes, if you've got more than one keyboard, this little icon appears as a button next to the spacebar instead. When you go in here, you have access to all the different standard emoji characters and other things like stickers, Memoji, and Animoji. And now, Genmoji is added to that as well. To create Genmoji, what you would do is use this button right here. But you could also start by describing the emoji that you want to use and see if there already is a standard one that exists, or maybe you created a Genmoji previously that fits that description. So I'm going to tap in here and I'm going to describe what I want. So here I'm looking for a face with a confused look on it, and I can see what's there as standard emoji characters. But let's say I want to create my own. At this point, I can tap this button here, and it's going to keep that description as it goes into the Genmoji creation interface. So with this here, this is the first idea it's proposing. If instead I were to just tap here without describing anything, then it will go here and it will wait for me to type. And once I've typed something, then it will generate the first idea. And I don't have to just take that idea or not. I can also swipe over to the next one and keep going. And you can see it's generated four here, but if I go to the fourth one, it's gonna generate a fifth idea. So I can keep going and see what it comes up with. It's going to try to vary the ideas a lot. So you can end up with lots of stuff, some of which may not be what you want, but it's gonna keep trying things. So let's say I find something that I think is cute and I wanna use it. I can simply now tap it and it will insert it as a character in my message here. Not only that, but if I go in the emoji list here, I go to stickers, which is the second item here, you can see it's actually added it as a sticker. So stickers are now stickers and Genmoji. So I can easily use this again without having to recreate it. Let's try again. Let's say I want to create a tree and I look and I see the ones that are available here as standard emoji characters, but I have something different in mind. I want it to look more like say a maple tree. So I'll type maple here. Then I'll ask it to create a Genmoji. I can tap here, but also here, this appears if it can't find anything to match that. Either way, it goes to this interface here and it's going to try to create this Genmoji and it comes up with various different ideas. Here's a maple tree that looks like a maple leaf. Here is a maple leaf all by itself. Maybe this is something more of what I want. Sometimes it creates these emojis that are these boxed pictures and I can keep going through and see which emoji best represents the concept that I want to express. So let's say I want to choose this one here. And one of the things I can do is tap these three buttons here and I can just copy it. So not use it here in messages, but go into another app. I can share it. I can save it to sticker so I can just save it and not use it. I can also add caption. And if I look at the caption now, it's just the description I had. But if I altered this now and then saved it, then when I search for an emoji character, it would reference this caption description here and hopefully find the emoji that I saved. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macboast.com slash Patreon. Now you can't use this to create just anything. It primarily will do four different kinds of things. One is it'll create a kind of emoji face. And you can 
sometimes just get this naturally when you ask for an expression or something. But if you use the word face, it seems to always want to generate one of those. The second is you can create a little character, usually from the shoulders up, uh, that looks like an emoji. And we're going to look at that in a minute. The third thing you can do is create objects like the tree there or a kind of food or anything you could think of. And sometimes those little box pictures that show a little scene. But you can't use it for some things. Like, for instance, it doesn't seem to ever generate full body images or people doing actual actions, things like that. So it's not a full AI image generator. It just generates emoji-like images. So let's go and ask it to create something that would describe a person. So in this case, it gives us some examples here of real emoji. But let's go here and create a Genmoji. And it's going to create something here. And you can see it puts a person there. Now, where does it get this little character from? Well, you'll notice under here when it identifies that you're trying to show a person, this little person button. And if you tap that, it takes you to this list. And the list allows you to choose a person. The first one is to choose something that looks like a standard kind of emoji person. Then after that, it's going to show you a list of all of the people it finds in your photos library. So you can choose one of those as well. So for instance, if I wanted this to look like me, I can choose me right here. And I can even tap edit and then select the photo of me I wanted to use. And then tap done. And now it's going to create a character that doesn't look like a standard looking emoji character, but instead looks kind of like me. And I can still flip through and try to choose different versions of this. Now, if I go back here to the person button and then I choose emoji, then it will go back to using a standard emoji character. But I can also tap edit. And now I can choose the type of appearance I want and skin tone. So you could go through these and choose the type of emoji character you want. You can even choose the standard emoji yellow type character like that and done and done again. And then you'll get an emoji based on that. So it doesn't always have to be based on somebody in your photos library. And we'll add this character here to the message. And then notice they will also now appear in the stickers. Now, of course, you can use these in messages, but you can also use them as tap backs and as stickers. So for instance, if you wanted to do a tap back for this message here, you can tap and hold it. And you have this button right here, this little emoji button. You tap that, and now you can add an emoji as a tap back. And those emoji would include those Genmoji characters you've created. In addition, you can use them as stickers. So one way to do that is to bring them up here in the keyboard and to drag and drop onto a message as a sticker. But you could also tap and hold a message and then add sticker and then go to your stickers there and add one of the Genmoji you created like that. Now you can also use Genmoji in other places. They work equally as well in the Mail app. So here in Mail, I can use one of the ones I created or create a new one. Like let's say this one right here. And you can see it inserts it in the message. They also work in the Notes app as well. So I can add an existing one here to the Notes app, for instance. So you can use these to liven up your notes with little objects and emoji characters. Now in a lot of other apps you'll find you can't yet use Genmoji. I expect more apps to be adding this as they update using the latest iOS text engine. But like if I'm here in Pages and I go to use one, you see that they do appear. But if I try to insert it, it's actually going to insert it as an inline image. Pages has had inline images forever. So you can certainly use them the same way here. And you'll find that these even work in pages on Mac because they're just inline images and pages can handle those. So how these work in other apps really varies. Sometimes they work just like they do in messages on the iPhone. Sometimes they work like inline images and sometimes they don't appear at all. In cases where you're sending a Genmoji to somebody, if they've got something compatible on the other end, like they're also using an iPhone with 18.2, then they'll see them just like you sent them. But if they're using an older version of iOS or they're using an Android phone, they may see them as just regular images, but they will see them. So some other tips here. If you want to ever delete one of these, it works just like a sticker. So when you're viewing your emoji like this, you go to your stickers and you'll see one of them here and say, I want to delete this one. You tap and hold for a second and you could tap delete. When creating your emoji, don't be afraid to keep editing the text. 
try different things. For instance, I may not get what I want when I first type something. So then maybe I'll just edit it until I get something I like. Sometimes it helps to just describe things in different ways, use different adjectives, maybe rearrange the words a bit until you eventually get something you can use. Other times it's more useful to just describe a basic concept of what you want to express instead of trying to picture what you want in your mind and trying to get it to display exactly that. I found that Genmoji are not only useful in messages, but as pieces of clip art. For instance, I do a monthly newsletter of things happening in my area, and I use little emoji characters instead of bullets in front of each event. But sometimes I can't find an emoji to fit the event. But now with Genmoji, I probably can. So even if you don't use emoji very much while texting, you'll find that Genmoji can be used in a variety of different ways. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.